Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, friendos of all ages, welcome to the stream. This is actually a recapturing of last night's sprint kickoff and sprint zero planning uh, session uh, for a Vegabond game. Uh, reason being, I found out that I was using incorrect music on my live stream. So I wanted to nip that in the bud and record this properly. Get your licensing correct. Pro tip. Now, uh... If this is your first time ever watching a video like this, what we like to do is we have changed the entire script. We've changed the entire process. So this is the first of the new iteration of the David West stream slash video series where I'm going to be spending pretty much all of my time being accountable to the viewers. And by accountable, I mean as a game developer. So we're going to talk tonight about uh, what I'm doing in terms of changes. We're also going to talk about what it actually means to be uh, agile or running a scrum or a sprint style project. And then we're going to get into the guts of what the game is. So Vagabond Game has been the game I've been developing on stream since about, I guess, October of last year. And it's turned into something pretty cool. And I have a clear vision about what I want to build now. And now that time is it's about to turn into something. And I want to explain what I'm going to build so we can actually get this thing out the door and what your role is in that. And last but not least, we're going to do our first sprint plan for Sprint Zero. So let's uh, let's get into this thing, shall we? Slides, let's do it. So like I said, this is Vagabond Game, the project re-kickoff, re-kickoff, and the Sprint Zero planning. And it's dated August 5th because I did a live stream. It'll still be available on YouTube, but uh, this is going to be my re-recording for any other video platforms. And so... So project re-kickoff, what does that actually mean? Well, ultimately I'm relaunching the project and taking it up a notch on the production side. So what does that, what am I talking about exactly taking it up a notch? I've been working on this project since, like I said, October of last year, building it alongside many people on Mixer, Twitch, um, mainly Mixer. And it's been fun. It's been a great ride, but the, the live streams were a bit confusing and the project itself was also getting polluted with lots of ideas and old code and garbage as I was learning as I went along. And so this is the re-kickoff to not only just focus in on what I'm trying to build, but also start it from scratch. Pull the ideas that we've developed forward into the new code base, but sort of clean code base and start to re-engineer the game that I have in my head. And also we're going to going a little bit more agile with some scrum. So if you're not familiar with Agile practices, that's okay. We're going to talk a little bit about a very high level, no expert by any stretch, but I'm familiar with them and we are going to be talking about sprint reviews, retrospectives, and planning sessions every three weeks live for all you lovely people out there on the internet. So, and that's at least every three weeks to start. So let's talk about some FAQs that were for myself, you know, why am I doing this? You know, well, the big one is keeping myself accountable. I think it's really important for me to make this game just for my sake. Like, let's be fair. This is a very self-centered focused project, but I want this game for players, whether that's one player, 10 players or a hundred players, doesn't matter. But I want to make myself accountable to the audience and want to demonstrate that this is possible. And it's work. It's not trivial work. It's not easy work to do in my real life. Um, but I do want to help make myself more accountable because all those are excuses. I can get this thing done if I put my mind to it, and this is what's going to help with that. Uh, more importantly, of course, keeping the development moving forward so we get the game eventually, get new iterations of it, and to focus my time, thoughts, and effort. So as a mental tool for myself, being able to stay organized uh, and focused in on the game, the streams are starting to feel like more of a, a chore that was getting in the way of the game development. I love streaming. I love playing the games with people. I love the audience. I love the chat. I love all of it. But the chore aspect of it was on me. I wasn't able to prep for my development streams as much as I wanted to or at all, really. Um, I'd end up just playing games, and that's fun. But I'm not trying to become a streamer. I'm trying to be uh, a pro streamer. I'm trying to become a game developer. Or at least in some capacity become a game developer. So this is going to help me focus that. So what is changing exactly? So a few things. So the first thing is, well, we're doing a reduced stream schedule. So I was, used to do twice a week for about two or three hours. It's going to be greatly reduced to uh, weekly. So we're going to, so for starters, we're going to do a reduced sprint review retrospective plan every three weeks to start. So that was the first one was on Monday. It's going to be on a Monday night. They'll be scheduled regularly. Um, there'll be possible random streams of gameplay. And 
that's really what the major core of the content is going to be. But every Monday there will be new content delivered via the streaming platforms, more specifically um, a stand-up or a scrum, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But another important thing is that I'm going to stream to more platforms. So last night we streamed to Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, and Facebook, and I'm going to be probably hopefully adding Periscope to that so the Twitter people can actually see me go live. Um, and I'm actually working on a sixth one as well. I use Restream.io, and I'm just trying to maximize the, the broadcast range of these streams, just trying to make myself accountable to as many people that want to tune in. Uh, other stuff that's happening, the wiki that I had going and the, and the, the repository we had going with Azure DevOps, that's going completely private. I'm going to keep using it. It's a really good tool for me, but I found it very opaque, and I don't think it was providing the value that I needed it to to the audience. So we're going to pull that stuff away. Um, issue management, there is still going to be a, a window into that world, and we're moving it over to GitHub just because it's a way more social friendly platform and it's a lot easier and more accessible. So I'm going to stick with that. We're also going to be moving the releases to davidwest.itch.io. So if you're doing that, uh, it used to be Cocoboco Studios.itch.io. That's my company. That company's not going away. Um, but uh, for simplicity to keep make to make sure that I'm focused in on just this, we're just going to put under my name, my brand. If you know it's David West, you know it's Vagabond Game, straight up, plain and simple. Um, so how do you keep following along? Probably pretty easy. You just follow itch.io. If you went to the page before, it's still there. Find me there. Um, you know, follow along with the game. We're gonna be it's gonna be moving from scratch, moving forward, hopefully pretty quickly. Head over to the GitHub site. So I'll share that link in a little bit here. And also social media. So Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn are my big ones, and there is a Discord. So if you want, shoot me a tweet on uh, on the old Twitters or whatever. Or if you're live in chat, just do, uh, I got a bot sitting there doing, you just do type uh, command discord or exclamation mark discord. You should get an invite to that whispered to you, regardless of uh, what uh, video platform you're looking at. Uh, live streams are going to still be happening, so please tune in for those on Monday nights at 9.30 p.m. Central. We're going back to that. But there's going to be less frequency. So there's going to be every Monday night, there's going to be something. But there's going to be a little bit shorter a little bit easier for, for me and hopefully a little bit more concise. So we're going to focus in on that. And of course, there's my website, but the website is simple. It's just a static page that points you to where to go. So head over to the website if you want. Okay, so that's what's changing. And we're, I, I mentioned this specific thing about agility and using Scrum and Agile methodologies, blah, 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 blah. But what does that actually mean? I want to kind of give a brief introduction to that before I get into what the what the pl what the project is and where we're going from here so scrum 101 so let's just get into it so what is a sprint review well a sprint review is really just a meeting to review the progress that has been made in the last sprint aka a block of time in our case a block of time where a sprint is three weeks starting every monday and what this does is the sprint review meeting that happens at the end of the three weeks it keeps the team accountable to the stakeholders. So there's frequent feedback. So every three weeks, there should be a new release or some new content, some deliverables for people to review and recap and check out and comment on and provide feedback every three weeks to start. But the key thing here is to provide value to players early and often. So we're just gonna be iterating on this thing, moving it forward. Uh, so the three major roles in a print review are the product owner, the developers, and the stakeholders. Um, the product owner kind of reviews, is kind of the leader of the whole group, kind of kind of decides what's going into the game, what's not going into the game. The developers are the people actually building it, and the stakeholders are those that are invested in it, and they're just discussing it, reviewing, providing feedback along the way. So in this specific project, I'm really the product owner and the developer, right? It's my game, it's for me, it's what I want to do, and I'm also building the, the damn thing. So I'm the developer. But who are the stakeholders? And that is you, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely you. And I really hope that you're going to help keep me accountable with providing that feedback, whether it's on the streams or whether it's in Discord or whether it's via Twitter, whatever it is you want to do. If you're playing the game, leave me some feedback. I am going to listen to it. It's for sure going to be some good, some good, uh, hopefully some good conversation out of that. So once you're done the review, you do a sprint retrospective. And a sprint retrospective is just going to be a really short little thing here, but it's the time where we kind of discuss what we just reviewed. So more specifically, how can we improve? And in our case, it's going to be in two areas. One, in game development itself. What can we do to improve the game? What's fun? What's not fun? You know, where's the fun? Callback. 
and also inside the community. How can we make the community more accessible uh, and, and friendly and adoptive to our crazy needs? And I got into a stream with that with Stilterfish, and we were chatting about it. And there's a lot of stuff I got opinions on that. We'll talk about the end of it at Scrum 101. Uh, these will be pretty short, considering the size of the development team. So if you're looking this stuff up, getting into Agile and Scrum and the methodologies and stuff, this is sometimes a whole day where you just kind of sit down and brainstorm all this stuff. This is not going to be a day where this is all going to be the review, the retrospective, and the planning session are all going to happen in a single stream every three weeks. So it's going to be a short blip, but we are going to talk about it and have a section of time dedicated to a retrospective and report on that. Now, what is a sprint plan? That's the last of the three, right? It's exactly what it sounds like it is. It's a plan for the next sprint. So we pick what we're going to be working on and we answer three core questions. What can we get done in three weeks? How will the chosen work get done? And what is the goal of the sprint? So really picking the work that I actually have in the backlog, that'll be exposed to you via GitHub and you can actually help play along with that. I might add a few things in there. You know, there might be some priorities that I know that need to be addressed. How will the chosen work get done? So that's about prioritization about what's more important because you know, sometimes you're running out of time, things happen, you don't get stuff, everything you want done. So you want to focus on the important stuff. And what is the goal of the sprint? What are you trying to, to do? What promise are you trying to deliver on in three weeks to those stakeholders? Really important question to answer. So what about the daily scrum? This is the extra FAQ. I'm not doing a daily scrum and that makes me unofficial. It's more of a scrum, but kind of idea. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to do them weekly and that's what Monday streams are going to be. So every Monday I am going to provide some content via live stream. Um, I'm looking at on the, when it's not a live stream, it's going to be a recorded video that I'm going to schedule out for that time. And it's going to get published uh, shortly thereafter, but this should give me some accountability. And that's what I'm going for. This whole thing is really about making me accountable and there'll be a time to actually participate in the discord and all that kind of stuff or on Twitter and social media and to play the game. But the focus, why I'm not doing daily standups is one, I want to get the work done. This is not a full-time gig for me yet. Who knows? Maybe I'll live the dream and I'll become a big fancy studio owner. Not sure about that yet, but we'll see. Right now, the whole point is to get the game out the door. And if I'm just constantly spending time on live streams and, and reporting back to everyone, it's going to turn into an echo chamber. I know what I got to do and what I got to get done. And my, my real life, my family life, my professional life, um, outside of game development at least, is time consuming and that's not a bad thing it's a real life i have a real life with real responsibilities i'm much older than the average game developer starting the starting in this i have a family i got a day job that and i got a i got bills to pay I'm not about to bet all that all that security and all that stuff just because i want to chase a dream but that doesn't mean i can't chase the dream and actually make it work that's the goal here so let's take a minute before we get into this uh, I want to take just a quick second and kind of highlight something here. So let's just recap that, right? So we're going to be doing, we are going to be doing agile game development or scrum based game development, which means every three weeks we're going to be doing a sprint uh, review, sprint retrospective and sprint planning session. And you are one of my stakeholders. So, you know, please participate via live stream or if you can join the discord, that is where I'm actually hanging out a lot these days. I have it available on my phone, so when I'm on my breaks and when I have spare time or when I'm on the road or when I have these little 20-30 minute blip, blips of time where I'm thinking about stuff anyway, it'd be great to see your feedback and stuff in there. So please head over there, uh, have a conversation, shoot me a line in one of the one of the many threads. It'll be, it'll, it'll be lovely. So on top of that, like I said, reduced stream schedule just every Monday night, 9.30 p.m. Central Time. There'll be something broadcast via... Uh, YouTube, uh, Mixer is my preferred platform by far, and there's many reasons for that, but Mixer for sure. Uh, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and I'm looking to add Periscope slash Twitter to, to that uh, live broadcasting spiel. And like I said, a sixth one, but I'm not sure about that one. That was a special one. But yeah, the whole theme of this is, and you're going to see this what happens with Vagabond Game, and you're going to hear about it, but my life it's hard for me to follow something and commit to something video game wise these days, right? Games growing up were something that required time and I had time. I had abundance of time. 
even when I was in my 20s, I had way more time than I have now, right? Like, it's just real life catches up to you. Responsibilities, mortgages, family stuff, just real life, man. It's just how it goes. It's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just your priorities shift. But that doesn't mean I still don't love video games. I'm obsessed with the damn, th damn things. I can't stop reading about them. I love them. Retro and new and beyond. But it's always been that dream to do one. But how am I going to force you to do seven hours of streaming? If I'm doing seven hours of streaming of content per week, that's great for content viewers. But I'm not trying to be an entertainer. I'm trying to be a game developer. And the thing is... I don't feel like streaming is a great... It, it, with streaming, it's not a, the most productive work session. Right? I'm sitting there with you, and I'm trying to be entertaining. I'm trying to be a public speaker. I'm trying to iterate my thoughts and explain what we're doing and teach and do, answer questions and have fun with the chat. And That's not a productive work session. I need more time to just pull away from that world and then focus in specifically on on making the game itself and then reducing those live streams a little bit and also providing recorded video for those stand-ups so there is content should make a difference so let's get back to this here so what is vagabond game and more specifically what is octothorpe vagabond game octothorpe word of the day you're welcome so what we see here is Vagabond game is changing a bit. It's the vision that I have in my head. I'm trying to get that out. And we're going to try that right now. So what is Vagabond game? It is a narrative driven survival game where having conversations with interesting people will help you hitchhike across the country to find your purpose. End pitch. That's where we're going. What you've seen on stream the last few months, it's been developing in my head a lot. I think about this game a lot. And it kind of started to play together some of the gameplay mechanics I've been thinking about toying with that I think I have the skills, I have enough skill to, to tinker with. This is what we want to do. So there's going to have two gameplay modes, conversational, which is the core one, and survival. So conversational is the one that we've been kind of focusing on the last month or so where we need to talk about or we're talking with someone in the game and we don't know who that person is but we, that's it's the, kind of the focus of it i want this narrative driven experience where you're meeting interesting people having conversations with them and doing some cool stuff and then there's survival or camping right i gotta camp that's what i gotta do i gotta survive in the conversational mode you're going to gather information items skills equipment and secrets through conversations with people you meet along the way and then, for survival mode, you're going to rest up for the next day by setting up camp and surviving to your next destination using the skills, equipment, and items you've collected in those conversations. So it's kind of a, a perpetual gameplay loop, right? And it looks something like this. So you can see you start over here on the, on the right side. It's over that way. That's, that was lame. Anyway, you start over there end up into a conversation conversation is the bulk of this gameplay in that conversation you gather stuff well, if you're doing gathering stuff you get to camp survive the night get and that kind of updates your level based on what you've gained in the conversation how you use it in camping mode that will decide where your next path is and what your next conversation is going to be and eventually when you find your purpose you get to the end so I want to elaborate a little bit on, on the two gameplay modes. So in conversational, it's the kind of the collect gameplay mode. It's the core of the game. But you can collect the following things. So information, like topics of conversation. Locations, so different places you can go along your journey. Uh, skills, things for survival, conversation, transportation options. This is kind of the RPG mechanic side of it. And items, so consumables used for trade and equipment. So And specifically, they're used for trade, but they're also there's equipment you can put on your person and then actually that has an impact on how your gameplay will roll out uh, the player will track some of their own information and locations i'm not going to uh, baby too many players uh, the, at least at the beginning i'm going to track it for myself and then inside of the game but i'm not going to put an inventory game or a quote-unquote journal in the game that's going to auto populate so for info and locations the players i'm going to rely on the player to figure that stuff out have them thinking a little bit when they're having these conversations the skills unlock other choices in the game. 
So as you gain skills and learn them from people, you're going to get some other options in the game, very much like Mass Effect, where you're not necessarily a morality meter, but as you get better at certain things, we talked about this on stream, the one that I can't share anywhere but YouTube, check it out there. Um, if you are following a musician path and you gain some music, musical skills along the way, which you need to, you might get some more options along the way in the game. So you can kind of do that kind of thing. Lastly, um, the items are survival currency. Uh, the items are specifically survival currency. So I'm not too worried about hunger and thirst in the traditional survival sense, but your items are going to get you a little bit further or, or fix you up. And we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, lastly, there's also equipment, right? We were talking about that earlier. So equipment will help. It could have an impact on your environment or on your on your player. In survival mode, though, that's kind of the end of the turn. So conversation happens. You go, you, you finish the conversation. You immediately start to camp, and camp can mean a lot of different things. We'll talk. I'll get into that over time. We'll see how this plays out. But the player is going to use items to determine their status. And status for survival attributes includes things like rest, hygiene, and I want to say health or hunger, thirst, but I'm thinking health, and that's more status ailments, right? Not an actual hit point level, you're taking damage. But your rest, your hygiene, and your status ailments, these impact how your conversations will go, right? If you're beat up, right, you're not doing too well on, on the health side, you got, you got a big gash across your face. People might have some assumptions about you, or if, you, if your hygiene levels are very low, that's not good for you, but it's also not good for the people you're trying to have a conversation with or having having something or get trying to get a ride. So it can have an impact on that. Uh, unless, of course, there's also distance traveled. I do want to have a kind of a core goal, metric and goal that people can go and how far they can get. And it's a video game, so who knows how far you can go. Uh, it's, the sky is the limit, or maybe not. Maybe the sky is not even close to the limit. Maybe we can go further than the sky. Lastly... It will include a turn summary when complete. So if you think about how Stardew Valley ends a turn, at the end of the day, you get that accounting spreadsheet kind of view. Nothing nearly as detailed, but it will kind of provide you a snapshot of what you accomplished. I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, something simple, like a little journal that kind of highlights a couple of things you figured out and just some notes that kind of tell you what happened last time. So you can kind of maybe get triggered... Uh, Tr trigger some ideas for yourself for the player to figure out what you're even doing now how does the game end um the player has to discover and complete a purpose purposes you can think of them as quest lines main quest lines that there's going to be lots of them over time hopefully um but if you find one and you figure out how to do it and then you complete it that's the that's the end of the game there's also the ability to miss all your purposes because um, a purpose can't, is a fa is something you can fail. And if it's failed, it's done. There's no going back. There's no fixing it. It's just, it is what it is. And if you miss all your purposes, well, then your distance traveled is you're, you're, you just kind of keep on. That's that's kind of like the quote-unquote bad ending. You've missed all the purposes. So, you know, that's that's one of the things. But there is no death in this game. That's what I mean by there's no HP. There's nothing, nothing like that. Um, you, you can miss a purpose. Um, but if you miss something, that means you will fail forward. So if you're not familiar with that, Extra Credits just did a great little video on it uh, about this idea of, of mixed success in tabletop RPGs. But you see it a lot in tabletop where, you know, you're going to try to sneak into a door, but you fail. And, you know, so you so did, did you did you steal the key from the guard? You go, no, but you managed to steal their wallet and they didn't notice. Uh, or no and the guard discovered you and hit you over the head with a rock so you ended up in a jail cell like you're not dead it's just the situation immediately changes for you and it might not be what you wanted but there's an opportunity to keep playing to keep moving so we're going to get to that point as we add new content over time and that's kind of the summary of vagabond game so it's kind of a uh let's just go back to me for a quick sec it's not anything overly complex it's this little loop of content the truth is it's going to be something pretty simple but it is all about the content and that's kind of what i want to do i wanted to make it an iterative design and i mean that in the, in the content design and the game design i want something that i can evolve over over a period of time to keep adding stuff to it um just because that's that's what i want to see happen i want to see i don't see myself making one big burst of a game but something that can, people can play and eat and get drip-fed over time. 
and then eventually the game will be done and I can say it's finished and I'll be happy with it. Hopefully. But let's get into the Sprint Zero planning because I'm not being clever at this. Sprint Zero, yes, I'm a developer and yes, all already started at zero. This is the sprint before the sprint. I've spent the last month where I took a month off of streaming and just kind of went dark for a while, cleaning up a lot of stuff. Realized I missed a bunch of stuff too. But Sprint Zero is my first kind of prep sprint. It's my practice sprint where I'm going to get some stuff cleaned up and, and for the game though specifically. So, what's the plan? What's the work we're going to get done here? Uh, more specifically, we're going to do a game design document, so a one-pager uh, wiki. Or, sorry, a one-pager that it will be shared with everyone on, on the following sprint review, so in three weeks. And storyboards for dialogue. I want to kind of really flesh out that gameplay mode so people understand it. I'd like to get the storyboards for survival done as well. So people kind of understand again. Survival is a very simple, simplified uh, gameplay mode. There's nothing. There's not a lot to it. Um, but dialogue, there's a lot more involved in my head, at least. So I want to try to flesh that out and try to un make people let people understand what it is. And lastly, I'd like to outline the first purpose. So we actually have some content that I can start writing for. You can see where this is going here. This is all about the goal, and you can see it on the screen there. It's about documenting or documentation for the vision or documenting the vision of the game. Not only do I want to be able to share this with people and make sure they understand what I'm trying to build with Vagabond Game, but I want it for myself. So I have a reference point to see my game designer, my game director chops, right? This is what I'm trying to build. And then I start to, to, to mutate that vision as soon as I start production on it. So this is our only pre-production sprint. And I'm hoping that with a few things done here, I'll be able to flesh out, I'll be able to start development in sprint one and we'll start actually building, building some stuff. Um, so how can you help? Please keep me accountable. So go to youtube.com slash David West if you want to see the original live stream, that's fine. But use the the exclamation mark Discord in chat to get an invite. So please join the Discord. If you can't get one, for some reason it's not working, I'm new with bots and all this stuff and getting all this stuff wired up. Shoot me a tweet saying, hey, I want to join your your I want to join your Discord. Please, please do that. Uh, follow along with the development progress. Uh, GitHub.com slash David West slash Vagabond Game. Definitely go check that out. So it's the place where I'm going to be publishing all this stuff publicly and, and it's going to move things along. You're going to see it move. And last but not least, you can follow me on social media. So Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. The live streams are important. So please follow me on Mixer, Twitch, uh, YouTube, Facebook, whatever you'd like. But uh, always the three main ones I hang out on a lot are Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So if you got questions, you find my daily, my post on there. I post on there frequently enough. Please shoot me a line. Uh, Twitter's the easiest way to get a hold of me if you want to comment on what I'm talking about because I, I kind of go a little bit into my thought process about what's currently on my mind in, in LinkedIn and Instagram. But uh, yeah, feel free to ask me questions, keep me accountable, but Discord's probably the best place to go to go find me. And that is all I've got. So I want to thank for your time. Sorry that I didn't get to actually share this properly, but this music is definitely licensed uh, properly. So it's all good on that front. And if you do me a favor and have yourself a pleasant day and or evening, I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you next Monday at 9.30 p.m. Central on all of the platforms you can think of.